Good afternoon and welcome everybody to our training session on subfloor prep with a focus on uh, leveling and patching. Uh, this session is going to be in two parts. The first part is going to be a traditional presentation. The uh, second half is going to be a live demo. In between, uh, there's going to be a question and answer period. Actually, there's going to be a question and answer period at the end of both uh, sections. If you have any questions, there is a questions tab. At any point in time, you can type in a question. We'll read your questions and answer them at, the, uh, at uh, each of the question and answer periods. And we may also respond to you electronically during the course of the presentation as well. And those answers will show up in that same questions tab. As a reminder, uh, this presentation and all our presentations are going to be uh, recorded and put onto our YouTube videos, uh, our CWF videos uh, channel on YouTube. Um, and uh, within an hour and a half of this uh, session, uh, this episode will be uploaded. So with that, let me turn it over to Scott McDonald of Boston. Thanks, Joe. Appreciate the introduction. Uh, and uh, we're, we're excited to be a part of this uh, virtual training session. Uh, I have uh, three members of Bostic that are, will be presenting today. Uh, and I want to mention that all the products discussed today are readily available at all of uh, Custom Wholesale Floors branches throughout Florida and Georgia. So some introductions, Craig Hacker first will be handling the first half of the presentation. And Craig is our sales development manager, uh, concentrating heavily on our surface prep products throughout the United States. So we're uh, happy to have Craig with us and uh, his knowledge. And then the second half of the presentation, uh, we'll be going uh, live to Texas, where we're gonna have uh, a live uh, demonstration of two of our self-leveling products. Uh, the gentleman who, who will be conducting the demonstration, his name is James Sharp, and James is our technical resource for all of the Southeast. And my name again, is Scott McDonald, and I am the local territory manager for Bostic, covering the great state of Florida and Georgia. So, Craig, I'm going to hand it off to you. Thank you very much, Scott. Thank you, Joe and Chris, for having us and Custom Wholesale Floors. I um, appreciate the opportunity to get together with you all and share a little bit about the floor prep. A uh, quick background of myself. I am a little bit older than I look. I've been in the floor covering industry commercially, grew up residential, but commercially on my own for the last 30 years. I began as a, a commercial flooring installation contractor and did that for 24 years, of which the last seven, I got into heavy surface prep for the reasons I'm going to share with you today. And then the last six years, I've been with uh, Bostic. So I'm proud to be part of this family and part of this team and look forward to sharing some information. Hopefully the things we share here today will be beneficial for understanding why we have to do floor prep and how important it is to do it well. Let's see if this will work. Thank you all for joining us and spending your time with us. Okay, I'm not even getting slide control. Let's see. Apologize for the delay. Joe, can you help me out here, sir? My made per sensor. There we go. Okay. Okay. I guess you might advance for me. So a lot of people think floor prep is only for sheet vinyl. It's actually for all types of flooring. All flooring manufacturers have a specification of what their um, requirements are for uh, floor prep. So this long list here basically covers virtually every type of floor covering. So all of it needs some type of floor prep and we're going to address these. Next slide, please. Okay, a lot of, like I said, a lot of people think that just glue down floors are the only ones that are susceptible to needing that flat and smooth surface because the adhesive will pull the material down again against the floor, cause any imperfections in the surface of the substrate to translate through, and but it's not actually true. Uh, they are susceptible to it. There's a lot of different reasons, whether that's wood or carpet or carpet tile. It can be just about any type of flooring that's directly adhered to the surface of the floor of the substrate, uh, no matter what the substrate type is. So if you prepare ahead and know what the specifications are for the type of flooring and what the use of facility, some other ideas we're gonna share in a little bit, you understand that the things can go wrong when they're not installed properly, not only with the flooring and the installation adhesives, 
but also the subfloor corrupt will translate through and, and those uh, any imperfections can cause flooring failures as well. And we're gonna talk, uh, cover those as we go through. Next slide, please. So in the floating world, that's uh, kind of the new easy install. Um, those who have done it, it's not necessarily easy, it's just you don't have to glue it down. So I don't aim to ever take anything away from an installer. They all have their own specifications. They all have their standards of what you have to meet in order to be able to install these products. It's important to know what type of uh, application, what type of a, of a uh, facility you're in and what the usage requirements are gonna be. So in light duty, for example, versus commercial grade applications, might be completely different products, similar in nature, but different as far as what the standards and requirements are for, to meet those installation requirements. So they do have a tendency to expand and contract. It's very important and critical to leave an expansion gap around the edge, which will also be in the flooring manufacturer's TDS. That, that truly is needed. Uh, the flooring itself, sometimes even with the newer that are dimensionally stable, don't necessarily expand or contract, but the walls of the building or the substrate of the, of the building can actually move. So you wanna leave that and it's important to leave that. Uh, acclimation is another good point that we need to keep track of. If the manufacturer says, don't bring this in on a 99 degree through a rainstorm in Florida onto the job site and box and start installing, there's a reason for that. It does need to acclimate and to reach some type of a normalized uh, temperature and humidity to match whatever the internal ambient uh, temperatures are on the job site. Next slide, please. <clears throat> So preparation, uh, a lot of people, and I, I admittedly, whenever I was researching some uh, floating SPC for my home, they said, oh, you can even bridge across like a whole missing square foot of ECT, this stuff will bridge across it. Um, maybe, I, don't, I wouldn't doubt that because I am a commercial flooring installer background and a heavy surface prep guy. You know, I want everything flat and smooth before I install it. So I would never assume that floor prep is not necessary. That's kind of a marketing tool and maybe over marketed a little bit. There will always be flatness tolerances, levelness tolerances in some cases, moisture testing guidelines. All those are, are imperative. You know, high spots even can cause bridging and humps in the middle of the floor that may not show up on install day, but that flooring will conform to that substrate eventually, even in a floating application, and you're going to see it. So it's better to dress it on the front end than it is to wait till the customer calls you back and go, hey, why is there a hump or a dip in my floor? So dips and bird baths are just the opposite of that. Bird bath, basically, if you think of it as basically a dip and undulation in the floor that is does not touch the bottom of the flooring at all times. So when you walk or roll something across it, then it's going to have that hollow effect sound or it can actually, if it's too much of a give in a bridge, it can actually cause the snap together mechanisms to eventually weaken and start breaking off. So flatness is probably the most critical when it comes to these types of installations. Next slide, please. So as far as the guidelines for flooring contractors, I mean, uh, I've been in this business a long time and I've always said you gotta be a half professional installer and half attorney because the last guy who touches it owns it. So if you're on the dealer or installer, install contractor side, we really need to pay attention together and that's what Bostic and my team is here for to help walk you through and guide you through some of these guidelines and help keep you out of trouble and keep satisfied customers, referrals, repeat business. Uh, just don't want to do the same job twice because you only get paid to do it one time. Next time, next slide. So when you first look at a, a substrate or no matter what it is, what type of substrate, you want to watch out for these types of indicators. These are contaminants that can be bond breakers that's gonna basically cause you a warranty or minimally a repair issue. So the better you walk the job and the better you examine the flooring to see what you're dealing with, not only for what the surface is, but what was down before, how it was demoed, what's going back on top and what the use of the facility will be, we help you fill in all that middle part. So reach out to Scott or any of us and we'll help you guys uh, overcome these obstacles. Contaminants is just one of them. Next please. So as we talked about for the NWFA and the NTCA for the tile side, they all have tolerance specs. And there's an example of how tight those specs are. It's very difficult to pour concrete, even laser screeded and get a truly flat floor in a lot of cases because concrete always shrinks. You don't know what the design mix was. You don't know how much water extra they added because it was hot that day, very common in the South. Uh, it's hard to pull sludge. So a lot of those guys tend to overwet or put too many additives in it. 
And it's very difficult to end up, even if they leave it flat when they leave, as it goes through the curing process, it can curl, deflect, and a lot of other issues. So we still need to be uh, sharp and on our toes to be able to look at a job and make sure that we verify whether or not it meets those flatness, smoothness, tolerances, or levelness tolerances. Next slide. So dry, I mean, never happens in Florida, but there's uh, maybe a little bit of humidity down there and maybe a little bit of wet slabs here and there. That was a joke, they're all wet. <laughs> Your groundwater is basically at six inches below the surface uh, in some cases. So relative humidity testing and calcium chloride testing are the two predominant historically types of uh, ways to check for what moisture is in concrete. There's a couple big differences we'll touch on in a minute on how those work and why one is preferred over others. Uh, there's also some handheld concrete moisture meters. Those are a pretty good judge just to go in and walk a job and spot check to get an idea if something is obvious, but they will not replace in a court uh, as far as you come back for a claim and they did you do moisture testing. As far as I know of it, at this current time, they're not acceptable as the defense as far as what ma uh, floor manufacturers require. This is the floor covering manufacturers. <clears throat> if it's too high, you need to really take a look at a vapor retarder or a vapor remediation system. Uh, Bossic has a complete line of these and takes care of all these issues. Next slide. The first and foremost, probably the most preferred in the industry right now is the RH testing. Uh, Wagner's done a great job of developing these and improving them over the years. I'm not plugging for them, but that seems to be the most uh, recognized uh, type of, in, of, of testing and the brand that does the best job of probably marketing it. So, you know, most resilient floorings have a requirement of less than 75% RH. What is RH? RH is relative humidity, relative humidity in the slab. So when you think of when you're pouring concrete, there's, you know, components in there, there's sand, there's uh, aggregate, there's water, there's uh, cement, and then there's sometimes some minor adds to extend the life of it or working time or e increase the flow. Though the time of water is a water of convenience, it's added at the time of that placement. So what happens during a slab's cure before we show up as installers or contractors and dealers to show up and install it, we need to know what that level is. Uh, contractors say, yeah, I poured it 60 days ago, we're fine, don't worry about it. Always test, because I'm telling you, I've seen slabs that are years and years and years old for several different varied circumstances. They're still wet. There's excess relative humidity or moisture that's unabsorbed in the concrete. Sometimes there's uh, something coming from underneath the slab that there was not a vapor barrier put down, which is you know like 60 mil poly uh, that's laid underneath the concrete uh, directly beneath it is required. So it costs a lot to, to test for these products. Um, we consider the cost of these tests at three test per the first thousand feet, and then one test for each an additional thousand. If you're on a 30,000 foot project, the cost of testing adds up quickly. So Bostic has a solution for that, but first we're gonna look at the next type of testing. Uh, I guess we're gonna get that in a minute. Okay, so subfloor guidelines, typically concrete, interior concrete is 3,000, 3,500 PSI generally. So they all have their specifications from the division three or concrete guys. Their standards are usually like a quarter and 10. And uh, what they call a quarter and 10 and what floor covering guys call a quarter and 10, I think you'll agree are not the same thing. So there's ways to test for that, but uh, that is one of the main factors. You know, the surface profile, the porosity of it, the age of the concrete, uh, was it over wet? Um, without getting too far into the woods and the technical side of it, but you know, is does the floor have integrity? Is it clean, solid, porous? Is it a substantial slab? So we have to analyze these on a job-by-job -job basis to really take care of it and give our customers the best value and the best instruction uh, we need to do as a team. Next slide. So in trying to solve for all these issues, Bostic has, oh, there we go. We have uh, all the self-leveling and floor prep products necessary to remediate moisture, to build any type of a slab up that meets the floor covering specifications. That's what we do. And that's what I found out years ago is the best way to do it is be the guy that has the answers to the problem and sell that as part of your system and service. That's gonna make you far better, more profitable, and reduce a lot of the callbacks, claims, warranty issues. Uh, you don't wanna be in that boat. Those are no fun. And all we wanna do is give a great value and get paid. So it's contractors. Next slide. Okay, here's our surface prep lineup. These are the uh, the Bostic products. 
we're going to cover some of these in a little bit more detail, but I wanted you to see the family of products. Basically, with this list right here is a fairly short list compared to some manufacturers on how we address floor prep issues, how we take care of those, and the offerings we have to basically meet the value and budget for each type of project. Next. Let's begin with our self-leveling products. We're going to start off with the first one. Before we get to that, we're going to start off with the primer. So this is really cool, and this is one of the things that really uh, drove me to Bostic is, you know, the Universal Primer Pro is a unique uh, high-grade uh, acrylic xylane primer that's interior, exterior. One primer does everything, and that's important because if I go to a job site, you've got two problems. One, I could either pick the wrong primer, whether it's recommended by my rep or I read the TDS wrong or I guessed. And the second thing is what do I do with the leftovers. So with, by having one primer, we're able to go um, – know that we have the right primer in stock for the job. We're always going to send the right primer out with the installer for the type of substrate. doesn't matter what type it is. Any of those on the, the list there that you see, this primer will deal with. So instead of having two, three, and up to even five primers, we can do that with one. And then at the end of the job, I always end up having leftovers based on how I estimate. That primer goes back to the shop, goes out on the next job, and I call those no-cost carry forwards. So that basically helps increase my margin as I bump it from job to job to job. And you'd be surprised over a year's time how much money you can save actually by using one single primer. Next slide. So in the self-leveling family, the SL100 is our economical, but it's actually over-engineered to be an economical. It's a great problem solver. It's um, very, uh, very flexible in how you can use it. Anything over concrete, you can do a quarter inch, up to three inches neat, and up to five inches with extensions. So the walking time is still pretty good. You can get back on it and walk across it or return to service, as we call it, for in about two to three hours. We see these on, the, I tell you, we got millions and millions and millions of feet of this product poured out because of the value of it. It's a very cost-effective way to be able to flatten or smooth the floor. The only caveat is, is, you know, you have to, it's a little slower in cure. It's not completely calcium aluminum or self-drying, although there is some, it isn't completely so. I'd say uh, uh, generally it's about one day per quarter to three eighths of an inch thickness. It's you're going to have to wait before you install your flooring, but you definitely need to check it and make sure it's dry to meet whatever your flooring uh, for covering requirements are for uh, amount of moisture in it. So we're always going to prime. Everybody asks, do I have to prime for your self levers? And I always tell them only if you want them to stick. And that's a true statement. I've seen a lot of people get lucky. The porosity happens to be just right and it does stick, but in general, always prime. It's very cheap insurance. There's no sense in putting yourself at risk without doing that. This product can be hand pumped or poured. So the, um, hand pumped, pumped or hand poured, sorry. Uh, so you can, it's very versatile on how you can use it. Next slide. So the SO150 is a step up on that. It is calcium aluminum, and but it does have a thickness limitation a little bit of a quarter inch to one inches. So generally going to do the same thing, add water only and either pump or hand pour barrel mix. And you're going to be able to return back, you know, pour your floor, gauge it, smooth it and get back on it, uh, return to service in an hour or two. So, but it speeds up the install time. So from four to 12 hours, you know, in about four hours, you can start installing hard tile because the thin set is going to bond to it and it's not going to be an issue. And even hardwood, if you're fixing dips or undulation on the floor, you can get back on it as soon as eight hours later. So it's good for small jobs. It's um, installers are really uh, fans of this product, especially in the tile and the wood segment. Next product. So the SO175 is kind of the silver bullet. If you had to pick one thing to keep in stock, this is what I would pick because I can do fix anything on concrete. So this is underlayment and price like it, but it's actually a premium. So it's a higher flow, easier to work with, longer working time. It also uh, qualifies as a wear layer, which means I can use it as a standalone walking surface as long as I use the sealer or coating to protect the surface of it. So basically, as you see, from an eighth inch to two inches neat and up to five inches with extension, there's not a whole lot I cannot do with SL-175. So quick return to surface, you can walk on it one to two hours and install flooring in six to 12. Even if it's two inches deep, you can come in and install the next day as it's not gonna slow you down. So if you want a premium and you're in a fast pace, or a larger project and need more working time, this is a great product to consider. You can integrally dye it, or you can topically dye it with acetone dyes, and then put a coating or sealer on top of that to protect it and use it as a wear surface. 
It's like so why we call it affectionately the silver bullet. Next, please. So if you come across a substrate that is a second story above known dry area, these are typically going to be wood structures. It's going to be chipcrete, lightweight concrete, old mud beds. You can't put cementitious type levelers on top of these. So a box that gets that they'll gyp. It is a premium gypsum based self leveler. It's a hybrid, so it has virtually no shrinkage. So it's got a great thickness limitation of a quarter inch to two inches, and it's still pretty good walkable in three to four hour return to service. Again, this is not a self drying product because it's gypsum, so you have to wait till it dries out. Generally, you're going to say about 4% uh, moisture content if you're using a dome horst or a Tramex or something along those lines. You're looking for it to get down about 4% for um, resilient type floorings, but you can get back on them pretty quick still. And it is for gypsum still 5,000 psi, which exceeds that of concrete. So it's a great solution for a low prep situation. Scrape the stain, old adhesive, non water soluble adhesive residue. This is another great application with this product. Next. Okay, SAO Rapid. So, what happens when you're in a hurry up situation? Say you're doing a hospital, an OR, an ER, uh, somewhere in that type of vicinity or grocery store aisles, and you're doing overnight remodels or weekend remodels. You basically prep the floor. This is a self leveler. You can go back from an eighth inch to one inch, pour it, and get right back on top of it. You can install tile in an hour and hardwood in four hours. You can install, say, sheet vinyl or VCT typically in about two hours. So if I'm in a hurry up situation, it might cost me a little bit more per bag, but I'm going to basically save a whole lot of labor and trips back because I can do a large project, do the prep, uh, and still do the installation in the same day for one to three thousand feet. So I'm going to save a lot of cost on that side of it by buying just a little bit better powder. That's super fast curing. It's super fluid, easy to use. Doesn't take as many guys as a, as a larger leveling project typically because of the working time. You're talking, you know, 30, 40 minutes working time, depending on temperature and humidity in an acclimated space. So it dries fast and hard, and it doesn't cost a whole lot. Most of these jobs are, you know, a pallet or two or less. So if you're, you know, working on those type of areas, that's a great way to solve. If you're fixing isolated bird bath on concrete, say you're a tile guy or a wood guy, you can prep it, prime it, pour the SL wrap it, and still get, jump right back on it in a hurry and still keep moving forward. Great product. We're going to demo this one at the end of the project or end of this video as well. Next, please. Okay, so the solution is through thick and thin. So we're going to give you some examples and kind of fly through some of these as far as thick as the thicker pour of self-leveler and thin would be like the uh, SL Rapid or the SL200. They're designed to self-level even the 175 down to as little as an eighth of an inch. That's not, a, that's not the thickness of a piece of VCT. So we'll, next. We're bringing deep pours, okay? So uh, a lot of people are a little intimidated, and I admittedly was when I first started this. I'm like, oh boy, I know how to install all the floorings, but how am I supposed to fix concrete? That's what we're here, we're here for. So if you guys need any advice and anything in the middle, any training, infield help, uh, on-the-job site trainings at your warehouses, that's what we'll come and basically show you. If, if somebody, it's one of these things where somebody shows you the first time, you're like, okay, that's not that hard. But if you have to go through the school of hard knocks like I did, even though I had been trained by one manufacturer, they don't show you everything you can possibly come across. So for the first year or two, I'll be learning, still trying to figure out what to do. So it, anything as far as um, our products, even if you haven't done a deep job up to three quarters of an inch, it's, it's really not that difficult. If I've got a 10,000 foot job, and there's no way I can level it at three quarters, you actually can. I'll show you how to set it up because basically you're gonna eat that elephant one bite at a time. We're gonna break it up into strips by separation barriers and pour every other one, hopscotch, pull the barriers loose and then pour the middles. So I can take a 10,000 foot wide open spot and I can pour it in controllable width depth so I can keep my depth, controllable width, and then hopscotch them and come back and fill the middle. And it's just like doing a whole bunch of 1,000 foot jobs. So it's, you know, you can do them all consecutive same day and just keep bouncing back and forth. Next slide. So you're not in over your head because you have Bostic and our Bostic team on your side. You have uh, custom wholesale floors to support you. We're going to work as a team and help you guys solve your problems. Um, if you got more than just a few bags, all it takes usually is adding one or two more guys and the right methodology of how you set up and run a job. And you can just flat go to town and get a whole lot of floor prep done in a day. And of course, you're charging for that. So hopefully you're making good money on that as well. Next. 
So here's an example of an old sleeper system was torn out. This floor needed five inches, um, I think uh, four inches, I guess, to, to uh, raise it up to flat. And it was going to be VCT installed in the school. So you prep it, vacuum it. Make sure, vacuuming is very important to pull the dust out of the surface, especially if you did any grinding or shot blasting. Prime it and pour it. We can pour and cap this whole thing in one day with uh, like SL-175, come back the next day, and we can just install VCT on top of it because it's so completely self-drying at that point. Next. So in this particular job, we added some stone or aggregate. So when we say width extension, so the SL-175 is an eighth inch up to two inches neat and up to five inches with extension. Extension means stone. Neat means just add water. So if we're going to uh, broadcast three quarter inch chip stone over the top, it needs to be three quarter inch or larger because we need those stones to not touch and not overlap. So you don't want a big piece and a little piece because they'll plug the holes, the float through holes in it. So if you're actually using three quarter in our high fluid products like SL-175, you're going to actually pour it. It's going to seep down and around, down and through and go all the way to the bottom, bond to the primer. And you're going to have like one reinforced chunk of concrete. That's how you're able to go deep in one application. This particular project is being pumped. So you just fill it up until it hits the leveling pin, which you can't really see in that picture. And then you know you got a flat floor, you got a smooth floor, and it's five inches deep, and you're still installing next day. Another option is mixing in three-eighths pea stone. That's not as much fun. You actually mix up two or three bag batches, add up to 50% uh, stone. It's basically a two to one, I guess. Uh, then you're going to basically go dump it. It's going to thicken it a little bit, help the flow. But those are a couple different options. When we talk about extension on the rocks, that's what we're talking about. Next, please. Time to pour. Here's your picture. So here's where they're pouring across the top of that one. They give you a visual of what I just explained. If you do decide to do barrel mix, you're going to have to go really fast and have more of them in this application, five inches thick. But you could also put a sheet of plywood down from your mix station across the stone. It makes it a whole lot easier rolling those carts or barrel dump carts and able to get the cement over the other side where you're going to pour it out. Next. So flatness is connected to the heel time and how quickly you marry your pours because we do have longer working times. When you have that heel time, is the same thing, basically. If we tell you 20 minutes working time, you get up to 20 minutes to mix one batch, pour it, gauge it, smooth it, and then go mix the next one and come back. Pour into the edge. Never pour short and let it run up on top because that can happen. Actually pour directly on top of the edge of the last pour. That actually kind of mixes those and helps those meld together and helps that flattening process even more. So it's a little trick I learned years ago. If you're not doing that, you might encourage your installers to do that. Next. So on the thin pour side, so the tr traditional quarter inch and above self levelers aren't really designed to level at an eighth of an inch. So we created some super fluids, the SL200 and SL Rapid. Those are going to be super fluid where they will actually, you can pour them, engage them at one eighth of an inch, run a rubber smoother over the top of them, and you're going to uh, eighth inch, 5,000 plus PSI slab that can take it rolling loads or about anything you want to deal with it. Next. So here's the two products I just mentioned. These are the super fluids or the thin mill self levelers that really shine. The uh, SL200 and then SL Rapid is the hurry up version. So if I'm going to put something over top of our moisture vapor barrier, SL200 is a good option. That gets you to that eighth inch required uh, cementitious layer on top that acts as a blotter coat for all your standard water-based adhesives. Um, the Rapid is just a faster version of that product. So if you upgrade to a super fluid, you're going to find it takes less people because you have 30, 40 minutes working time. You're able to get more done with the less people during the day, which controls your labor costs. You're still going to get that high PSI to prevent rolling load indentation or damage to the floor covering. Next. Here's an example. Do I need three people or how many ever you need? So here's an example. We'll get uh, in, the, in the lieu of time for today. We won't get deep into this. But uh, these are flow charts that shows you why some flow a little bit more than others, give an example of that high flow material, and then how many people it takes to basically operate it. Generally, a four-man crew can run with the thin mills, might take five or six, if you're doing a large bore with some of the traditional self levers Next. Now let's talk about hand patching. If you aren't going to self-level and you're just going to trial, these are the types of products you're going to keep in your van and you're going to use them each and every day. And basically, no matter what type of flooring you're installing, Ultra Finish Pro is going to be a great solution because it is truly a calcium aluminate self-hydrating product. 
which means self-curing. It's uh, one product that covers some of the other competitors have two, three, four products that cover different applications of the trialable uh, skimming patches, uh, including maybe a standard feathering type or one for low end or but still fast drying, one for moisture resistance, et cetera, et cetera. So the Ultra Finish Pro basically does all those in one product. It's an excellent product with excellent coverage. So you're gonna go up to half inch uh, in one lift from feather inch to zero. And, and when I tell you you pull it out, it'll fill the seams in the wood and you can just keep going. And it's not, it's gonna get excellent coverage and spot and smooth that floor out for you. This is the one my guys would always keep you about three cases in each van when I was contracting, because I've got something I can get through most of my trialable things. Uh, the only other option would be is if you had super heavy rolling loads, you wouldn't want to go deep with this project, or with this product, I'm sorry. I have another product for you for that. But uh, if, as far as daily users, this is the one we keep in the van that's going to solve all of them. Quick return to service, install just as soon as you can drag a trowel across the top and the trowel won't disturb the surface, you can start popping your lines, glue it up, let the glue dry, and install your flooring. Next. So if you need a value added version of this, cost per pound is what some guys look at. So when you're looking at trialable hand applied patches, the Webcrete 95 is an excellent, probably an over engineered as well, but it's a, a great Portland based patch that's very versatile, skim coat to half inch. So I got a lot of flex flexural strength in this product too. So it's a good option for those guys that are looking for, hey, I want a 25 pound bag, not a 10 pound bag because of the price per pound in their mind, you know, may not get the same coverage as Ultra Finish Pro, but and it's another option to be able to sell. I generally call this carpet patch. Most of these guys are filling up saw cuts, dormant cracks, floating around columns, uh, the diamonds, et cetera, to get something flat enough to do some carpet or carpet tile, maybe some LVP. Uh, it's a very good product with a high PSI, so it does have a little more resistance to rolling load indentation than the Ultra Finish Pro. Next. So on limited warranty side, uh, here's some examples, everything that Bostic makes basically designed to go together. So uh, if you use any recommended system, you're going to get extended warranties. Those are available actually on our website um, under, I think, customer support and then warranties on the drop downs. You're going to be able to see any combinations of the products. There's charts on there that show you if you use this product and this product, you get 10 years. If you use this product, this product, this product is 15. If you had a moisture vapor barrier on it, you might get 25 years. But that has to come request a special letter. So if it's a recommender for that application used according to the TDS, you can mix and match your own systems without a whole lot of extra paperwork support, knowing that we're going to help you figure out what solutions you need for the project if you need any questions answered, any help. Next. Stay smart. All right. So I think this is probably the last slide, if I remember correctly. And I think I did a good, a, did pretty good on time. So, uh, okay, good. So we're going to open it up to a few questions. If anyone would like to type in some questions, I'm more than happy to try to answer those for you with our team here. Uh, James is actually going to start mixing up the first demo. We're going to switch over to that in just a couple minutes. He needs a few minutes. So please feel free to ask away. All right. Uh, while they type in some questions, I, I have some. Um, uh, to get you going, um, you said back at the beginning, uh, check for porosity. Uh, can you explain how you can do that easily uh, when I ex when I inspect a slab? And I'm sure there's a couple ways to do it, but maybe one sure. easy way to, to check a slab for porosity. You know, that's something you think of with our technology these days that would probably have gotten easier, but I can tell you, when they first, I, I had the same question. I started, I'm like, how do I know if it's porous? Okay, so it's basically as simple as a water droplet test. So a lot of different ways to do that. I would actually, you know, just take a quick trip cup or whatever I had for those water once I had it prepped and vacuumed where I thought I was porous, um, or if I was just going into a job site, scrape and sweep it clean so I know that there's no other contaminants trying to absorb water. Just tip my fingers in the cup and just flick them around and you're gonna have a little water droplet. So I'll walk around the area flipping it, flicking some on the floor, and then I come back within 30 seconds to a minute, and I'm looking for each droplet to see if I have a dark ring around the outside within the first 30 seconds to a minute. If I do that, that means basically it's absorbing down into the concrete. 
So as long as my water droplets aren't beating on the top, like fresh white rainwater on a freshly waxed car, and they just sit there and do nothing, there's probably a cure and seal or another contaminant or coating maybe on there, a densifier on top of, in the concrete. So the way we check with that, if it'll drink water, it'll drink primer. So it's important always for adhesives as well, but for primers to make sure you have prosody in the slab. And that's probably about the easiest old school way that still works. If you can visually see that dark ring, sometimes it'll go right away. If you flick water on there and it immediately absorbs in within a first minute or 30 seconds, you probably got a pretty highly absorptive slab. So you need, might need more primer to deal with that. Or maybe use another Bostic product to, uh, you know, seal that up a little bit to reduce some of the penetration. Not to just completely stop it, but reduce the penetration so that your primers or your patches will not get the water sucked out of them so quickly. But yeah, the water droplet test, tried and true, done it for years. It's something very easy to see that you can train anyone to do quickly. Perfect. That's a good All question. Right. Another, yeah, another question would be, um, um, a lot of people have asked me, Universal Primer Pro, can I put, um, but I could, can I put someone else's self leveler over it? Uh, you can do anything you want, actually. Yeah, and and so the answer is yes. Would I recommend it? No, because you're not going to get the system warranty. Because what will happen exactly. is our prime our primer is going to stick to the slab. Their cement's going to go on top if you use somebody else's. And if you ever have an issue with those two break apart, that's exactly what's going to happen. You have the potential for them to say, nope, it was the primer, or the primer say, nope, it was the overwatered cement. So in order to avoid that, just use the Universal Primer Pro and then one of the Bostic cements designed to go on top of that. You might as well stick with the system. I tell you that that cost per square foot actually goes down as you have no cost carry forged. It's uh it's kinda not a good idea to mix mix and match products like that. Just for your own protection. That's what we tell them. But, you know, some guys, oh, man, that's all I have in my van or whatever. But we tell them to stick with the system. Uh, but I like to hear right. from your mouth. Um, Absolutely. That's why we call it universal. Okay. It does all of our stuff. You don't have to worry about having the wrong one. All you got to buy is Universal Primer Pro, and you always have the right primer. And, it, and it'll work on a dense slab, uh, you know, a soft slab. It, yeah. As long as you swept, it, it'll be it'll be okay, right? Oh yeah, James, give me the thumbs up if you're good or if you're already mixed. Do I have a couple minutes? Okay. Okay, so what makes Universal Universal is it works on non-porous, which is being on top of moisture vapor barriers or any other type of coating that's non-porous. We're gonna roll it on in the concentrated form, undiluted straight out of the bucket with a 3 8 nap roller. So yes, it works for non-porous. Standard porous concrete, I do my water droplet test. Within a minute or so, I can see dark rings forming around those. I know I've got some porosity. I need to dilute and cut the Universal Primer Pro one-to-one -one with water to thin it down basically so it can penetrate and absorb down into the slab and then broom it in and sweep off the excess after a couple minutes. That way I get that thin, shiny film, no puddles and no bare spots. Only trick to priming there is. And then on highly absorptive slabs, mud beds, lightweight concrete, chipcrete, you're going to usually have to do at least two coats. You know, three parts water to one part uh, Universal Primer Pro, the first coat, you need extra water to penetrate, absorb in there, hold those fat pores that are in that uh, low density product, hold that primer toward the top so that the next coat at a one-to-one -one will go on top of it. It'll chase that water in, chase and meet up with the old uh, Universal Primer Pro. And then the same thing is gonna happen. Once we get a wet film across the top, sweep off the excess, thin, shiny film, no puddles and no bare spots. That's the, if you can remember that, you're golden for priming. Okay. And for everybody listening, um, when the state gets open back up, um, if you really want to uh, bring these products on, uh, CWF and Bostic have no problem uh, coming to your location, um, you know, and we don't have a problem doing social distancing and setting up a demo at your right. location, um, you know, to train your staff, uh, get plenty of people there, however you want to do it, we'll be glad to do this. Uh, at your location and show them and go over Absolutely. all of them to train your guys. Uh, that's not a problem. We love to um, do it. So give us an opportunity and we'll show you how to make some money and add more value to the services you already offer. And, and then, so I got two more quick questions. Uh, do I have to worry about, uh, you know, mixing the product in 90 degree weather? 
and you know maybe Craig, uh, Craig, maybe you want to do it, or uh, maybe we do it during the demo. You can talk about that when you do the demo. Uh, talking about James, are you ready to go? He's ready to okay. go. Okay, we'll let James get started. I think he's already got some product mixed up, trying to time this just right to not waste any time. And then I'll cover that point yeah, as far as the uh, hot weather conditions. All right, okay, go ahead and introduce you, James, and while you're pouring, we'll, we'll touch base on that. We'll come circle back around to that. Thank you. If anybody ahead, has James. questions, go ahead and type them in as James does his demo. Hey, guys. Can you all hear me? You can? Okay. My name is James Sharp. I'm the Southeast Technical uh, Representative for Bostic. Uh, and as he is talking about it, I would love to come to Florida and help you out and help you understand the products better. Got a little housekeeping I need to get out of the way first. Uh, I want to remind you that the proper use of Bosque's products is governed by the latest product technical data sheet. Okay, these data sheets are final authority on Bosque products. So if there's ever a question on what you can or can't do on our website, which is www.bosque.us.com, you could go there and get all the updates. The technical data sheets are put on there first, and they tell you limitations of what you cannot do, and then they tell you what you can do, and they are the governing rule. So let's talk SO rapid. I know you've heard a lot about it. What I want to do is show it to you, because when we talk about more fluid, being 40% more fluid, the amount of water that's in it that helps it. It has six and a half quarts of water compared to five and a half on the other products. But that helps you, okay, when you think about cost, because on our other products, at an eighth of an inch, you get 50 square feet per bag. With this product, at an eighth of an inch, you get 60 square feet. So it drops the cost down. Just to give you an idea of, like, average cost, you know, SL175, it would be around 52 cents compared to 58 on the uh, SL Rapid. So there's not that big of a difference to them. The flow time's about 20 minutes. I'm going to pour this out so you can see how fluid it is. Now, it, this is going to mostly run this way because this board was on my slab over here, and it tilted this way. So everything's going to want to run down this way. But it's a very, very, very fluid product. Excellent healing. And <laughs> I tell you, I've had guys that have said that they want to use this as a party joke because it sets up so fast. Okay? Very, very, very fast setup time. Um, Again, you do have to use a primer with it. Universal primer, as Craig said, go-to product, wonderful product. Hey, this product is 5,500 PSI, okay? Very, very strong product in 28 days. Normal set time's around 40 minutes. Middle of winter in Texas, it was taking maybe 60 minutes maximum. Last summer in Waco, Texas, when it was 110 degrees, it, in a indoor but not air conditioned, it's set up in 17. So we're finding on a normal day, right at 40 to 45 minutes. Once it's walkable, you can start setting tile four hours for hardwood, okay? Uh, if y'all got any questions on that, type it down. I'm gonna go a lot faster than he does. All right, see if I can do this. All right. Now this has been sitting for about 10 minutes. But one of the nice things about it is once it does set up, y'all can see that's a little thicker than what it normally gets because it's been sitting. You just kind of retamper it, add no water to it, but look at it now. Look how pretty that is. Okay, so all you got to do, see how thick it is? Just retamper it down a little bit, get that water moving around in it. And now look at it, look how creamy that is. This is one of the easiest products on the market to work with. You could go from skim coat to half an inch. Very creamy. A lot of guys that use uh, some Ardex products and, and other vendors, and when we do heads up, blind test, this just blows it away. We'll play with this just a little bit so y'all can see it work because I'm going to use this board later today on a different demo. So, once it's fairly nice, there we go. 
Oh, man, it's beautiful. And now on the skim coat around the edges, it will take no time to set this up. As he was talking about on this, on, on ultra finish, skim the half inch, okay? On moisture sensitive, it's usually the next day on this product. I'm gonna sit down so you can see me. I'm not used to being this low. You can get about 300 square feet for skim coat and an eighth of an inch, about 33 square feet. Uh, what else is there? 20 minute work time, 30 minute set time, excellent product. Get it in the customer's hands, they'll love it. That's it. I told you mine was gonna be quick and easy. He covered most of the stuff I was gonna go over. That's a great demo, James. Great job, man. Well, you covered most everything, so I didn't have a lot to do. I just want y'all to kind of watch this. You can see even in the center, it's already popping off. I mean, this is a true quick product, but you can keep working it, working it, retampering it. So, James, if they mix it up, let me ask you a question, James. If you mix it up, uh, the Ultra Finish Pro and uh, you pull out half the bucket and spread it and you go back and it's just starting to get a little bit stiffer than you want to pull it out. Can you buzz it with a drill and bring it back to life and then pull oh, yeah. out the rest? Oh, yeah. That's, that's what I was talking. It's retampered. I mean, it's almost to that now. I did this one first thinking I'd get more life out of it. Okay. And you, you see, mm -hmm. I, I could barely pull that out. So, tell you what, while you answer the question on the heat 90 degree, I'm going to retamper this. Okay, yeah, it's a, it's very impressive actually because when you cool, the lovely sound of a drill in the background. Y'all love that. It's a good old day. Yeah. So hey, this is the real hot deal, water. Guys. That's right. We're doing live live action as Turtle Man says. All right. So the ninety degrees uh, heat is always a challenge. You know the. If slab temperature needs to be 65 to 85 degrees, but if your water or your slab temperature are uh, very warm, one simple trick, uh, I used to use 55-gallon plastic barrels. I'll let you go ahead and show what you got. See if it... You can still smash it out tight, thin, right? Yep. That's gorgeous. See, that's amazing because there's going to be a lot less waste with this product we did we design it to where it gives you the working time you need and the creamy smoothness that you want easy to pull and you can get it all out of the bucket with less waste but when you stop moving it as you see that light color in the center of it there as soon as you stop hitting it stop moving it it actually fires off and catches up and dries that faster faster than the number one brand name patch in the market which i won't say but i think we know what it is and so you're going to actually save money on the front end you're going to have as good or better results with it and better working experience because you're not trying to rush and have five minutes to get it all out of the bucket. So let's go to the 90 degree. Very good job, James. Very gorgeous. So the 90 degree question, when you take uh, either 45 gallon brute trash cans or 55 gallon plastic drums, I cut the top off. I use that for my holding water and I pre-fill those because you don't want to run out of water in the middle of a self-leveling job. And I fill those up and then just grab a few bags of ice from the local uh, gas station convenience store on the way bring it in a cooler, dump that into your water that you're measuring. So I know I'm gonna need, say for example, five and a half quarts of water per bag, but that's all 175. I'm doing 20 bags, I multiply that out. I make sure I have that much water plus another 10 or 20% and some cleanup water. So it's an easy way to make sure I've got all my water, I've chilled out more than I need, that's by adding ice to it. Especially if the slab is 85 degrees, the ambient inside is maybe 75, 80 degrees or uh, 80, yeah, 70, 80, 85 degrees, I can increase my working time a lot more by simply adding ice to the water. There's other methods to do that as well with some equipment, but old school, it's just as easy to throw bags of ice in your water barrel that you're going to bail your water from for measuring. It's a great question. Next, you got another one? Well, I'll also I'll throw in there for the patches, guys. One of the tricks for both of the patches is get them out of the bucket. If they sit in the bucket, they're going to set up twice as fast. You get them out of the bucket and keep them moving, they're going to last a lot longer. Absolutely. Same cold water trick is with the patches as well. That made me think of that as well, James. Exactly. Yep. Cooler water, going to extend your working time. Doesn't it be real cold, just, you know, 75 degrees or less? I want to I make a yeah. comment. 
Craig, on too, on, on the self-leveling guys. So a lot of guys don't know how to self-level. They want to do it, especially on the tile side. It's notorious on the tile side. Uh, hardwood, probably 80% of the guys know how to self-level. I'm not saying they all do, but there's still a lot of guys that don't know it. And if they want to learn how to self-level, we can come down and teach them because there's a lot of things to it. Right? Number one, having the right tools, okay? This is called a gauge rake. Okay, you've got to have a gauge rake if you're going to be out on a sub-level job. Okay, you need either a porcupine roller or you need your smoother. Okay, this breaks the tension off of it. If you don't have a porcupine roller, this works just as good. I know Craig likes this better than he likes a porcupine roller. I like the porcupine roller, but they both do the same thing. Uh, then the next thing that's very important, shoes. Okay, you don't wear mud boots and self-leveler. If you wear mud boots and self-leveler, you're going to end up packing the water to the top and pushing the mud to the bottom. It's not going to work. I only use these when I'm doing a deep pour because they have tall cleats on them. I went to Academy and bought a $10 pair of enclosed out of just soccer cleats. And I wear those on probably 80% of the pours that we go out on. But having the right tools, and Bossy makes this uh, – mixing bucket that has all of these tools in it except for the porcupine roller and it is very handy you can mix two bags at a time in the bucket it comes with a measure the mixer pretty much everything you need to do the job but invest in the tools with the self leveler if you don't then get with us and we'll come out and teach you how to do it james is right it's so much easier just a few key tools we have more questions joe the kit's not expensive no. Trying. Yep. Other questions, guys? So the only other, this is Chris. The only other question I have is a lot of customers will come in and um, whether it be contractors coming in or uh, a, a, a company will call me and say, look, you know, we're not used to doing floor prep, and I don't know if my guys know how to do it. I don't know how to charge for it. Um, you know, some guys will charge just add it in. Some guys will charge by the bag. You know, some kind. I don't know if this is a question. Sometimes I'll, I'll have somebody say, "Well, you know what? I'm just going to charge by the bag. I'm going to, you know." I'm going to charge it. It's a self-level job, and we're going to charge $125 a bag, you know, to the to the end user. Um, I don't know what it is across the country, you know, since you know you guys are in different parts of the country. Uh, maybe elaborate what you guys have heard out there, so our listeners can can kind of kind of hear what you've heard. Um, and every job is different, of course. You know, and maybe it's just a skin coat. Maybe it's just, hey, you know, I'm an eighth off here. I'm a quarter off here. Um, it's a small job. It's a, let's say it's a, a 10 bag, a 10 bag job. Uh, it's not real big. It's, it's, it's one room, one, you know, let's say it's, it's a living room and it's, uh, it's basically a little eighth inch, you know, deal. Uh, but it's, it is, you know, it needs some self leveler in there. Um, you know, it's a little quarter inch, eighth inch, 10 bag job, uh, small room. I did, I did, a, I did a lot of insurance work with, uh, my contracting. I owned a contracting company for 15 years and, uh, uh -huh. I was, I was charging my customer about $75 a bag, put it down. Um, right. you know, was a wholesale contractor. You know, and it depends on what you do. I mean, the idea behind, for example, the uh, SL Rapid, I kind of tell guys with SL Rapid, it, a lot of guys are trying to use patches as a screed or self-leveling, and they're not really made for that. They're, you know, you can do it a little more with the uh, Ultra Finish because it's more fluid. WebCrete 95 sets up a lot faster than Ultra Finish. WebCrete 95 would have been a rock in the bucket by now. But there's a lot of guys, like Craig said, that are coming in, filling in hose. They want that pop. So when they do, that's a great product. But the idea about an SO Rapid is to kind of come in and get them off. Because whenever you screed with a patch, you got to screed one way and screed the other way. Then sometimes you got to even screed at a 45 to get it right. 
and they never, you could tell, I tried to pull that out smooth, but you never get it perfectly smooth. So he's coming in also and sanding it and getting dust everywhere. But self-leveler, you fill it in and just mark your spot, fill it up to those spots, kind of skim it out after about 10 minutes, pull it, you know, kind of uh, skim coat it out. And then usually there's no sanding that needs to be done. I mean, because it dries perfectly smooth and beautiful. There's very few times if you know how to use it properly that you have to sand. So there's a lot less. I know they say with patch they can go quicker, but with SL Rapid, you have the speed of patch, but there's not the, the mess. And, you know, there is a little bit more cost to it, but that cost of getting on another job and finishing up. You agree, Craig? Because I know Craig's got a lot of... Yeah. Of, uh, yeah, those are some great points. And I've seen, like James said, you know, a lot of people bid by the bag. Uh, it depends, like I said, completely on a job site. If you've got 10 bags and you're in a living room and it's spot patching, so you're only filling up localized bird bath, that's one thing. I usually definitely charge by what I estimate my time and materials would be on that plus a margin. Sometimes I would uh, bid basically by the bag and double or triple the bag price, depending upon the situation. But if I'm leveling that whole area, I know I have to grind every bit of it, vacuum every bit of it, uh, mix and apply every bit of it. And I know I'm going to have to go away and come back on a whole room application like that. So that one I'm typically doing by the square foot. So I figure out what my, basically my costs are for that day with my cost plus or however you want to determine your margins and then break that down into a square foot price. So I know what my cost of my labor materials, markup, overhead, all the whole nine yards profit. And then I basically translate that to a square foot price. And in some areas they bid almost totally by square foot. So say a quarter inch of prep and standard self leveler with just the primer is say 250 a foot. Uh, that's kind of the going rate. So you go up or down from that as a base rate that's for a standard quarter inch so if i'm doing less i can you know adapt it to that but it kind of depends on the job side those are a few ways to look at it to give you some creativity on you know the, the customer the type of environment is the commercial is it residential is it multifamily is it in a um, high competitive market which florida typically is you know usually by the bag is probably going to be a good way to do that you just got to figure out how much multiple on your bag cost it's going to work for you and your team. But we're here to help train and make those. I'm telling you, it, if you learn the school of hard knocks, it, it might job might take you eight or two to do it in two, three, four hours. I mean, sometimes you can really cut that much off of it just by a few simple tricks on how you set it up, how you organize it, how you prearrange, you know, where your water is going to be, which access point you're going in and out of, uh, having your water pre-measured and iced, having everything ready to go. So when you fire up that drill, it doesn't take you four or five, six hours. It makes you take one or two. And it's, it can but, be that I much of a drastic say, difference. Right. I was going to say the, for me to go out and stuff level with somebody, I, I can usually pour, you know, five, 6,000 feet a day. And what the, the time it takes me to pour that 5,000 feet, it takes me the same amount of time to prep and get everything ready, have bags laid out, have water pressure ready to go, get the primer down. That's the hard part. Once you start mixing, then it's, it's a go, go, go. And on the dealer yeah. side, it's hard because you walk into a house that has carpet down. You don't know how bad that subfloor is. So I, when I walk into those jobs, I would just tell them, hey, I'm going to leave my bags on the job site so you know how many I use, and this is what I'm charging you per bag. And if they didn't like it, then, hey, you know, there's a guy sitting at Home Depot. He'll lay your floors and also paint your house. But here's the here's the problem for those that don't do you know floor prep. It makes such a better end result for your floor covering, whether it's you know vinyl, you know you know even a floating floor, a laminate, whatever. If you've got a floor that's sitting on top of a an uneven substrate, you've got you know, floors that move, you've got hollow spots if it's glued down, even a solid floor that's nailed over plywood that's got a really bad substrate underneath. Um, it just makes for a better finished product if your substrate is level. And yeah, you one really one of the take that point. Yeah, one of the things I teach in my class, in my class is in, in Texas, the contractors usually buy the thin set or the hardwood adhesive. 
okay? And if you're taking that thin set and packing it on the back and buttering it up and sticking it and pulling it up and taking it off and, put, and fighting with it. When I teach guys, they usually call me back and go, you know, since I'm leveling floors now, I'm laying 30% more floor than I was before because I'm not fighting with it. Number two, I pay for the thin set. I'm using 30% less thin set than I normally use. I get paid to put the self leveler down, so I'm making more money. So it's a win, 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 win for the installer and the dealer, you know, to, to self level. Yeah, agreed. And educate educate your you know your end user of how much the floor is going to look better and stay down, and why they have to have the, the self floor prep. It's all about education. Absolutely. Exactly. We have a picture I'd love to share with you that has uh, two grocery store aisles. One one's hand patched, VCT installed, it's even as simple as that. And the other had a thin mill self leveler put across top of it. Night and day difference. So you got to consider the life cycle cost of the product is going to be wearing. If you're not on a flat, truly flat floor, you're going to shorten the life cycle of the product. If you're talking VCT, you're going to dramatically, especially schools and grocery stores know this, the life cycle maintenance costs are going to go through the roof. So actually, by having a right. flat floor, you can actually pay for that additional flattening in the first two or three years, and the rest of it is just love. You get to live on something that looks nice, it's flat, it's smooth, there's no wear and tear on the flooring because it's laying there on a hard, supportive surface, and it's not you know, starting to wear out and cause issues. There's exactly. a lot of good reasons to prep. All right, fellas. Well, we appreciate it. Um, uh, we will, got one thing we'll I want to say. Get signed up for the Bostic Rapid Rewards. It's like a airline's award where everything you buy with Bostic, you get points, and then you can buy trips, TVs, fishing gear, hunting gear, uh, clothes, basketball, whatever. I mean, there's like 10,000 things you can buy on the Bostic Reward Program. It's free. Don't cost anything. Doesn't affect your price. Bostic pays for it. Get signed up on the Bostic Rewards. Talk to Scott. He'll get you taken care of. Yep. Yep. Sure enough. Well, thanks. Thanks, everybody, for, uh, you know, signing in and listening. Um, we have product in stock at Custom Wholesale Floors. Um, feel free to check with the branches or your territory manager. And I uh, want to thank all the guys from Bostic. Uh, thanks for the demo. Thanks for the presentation. Um, we appreciate everybody uh, listening in. And until next time, thank you very much. Thank appreciate you. you all. Thank you guys. Have a good thank day. you. Be safe. All right. Thank you. Thank you.